From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. You know, once again, we are going to be focusing on um, Israel and the Middle East only because so much is happening over there. Every time you pick up the newspaper, you read about a, a development of internal things happening in a country or going after another country, and we're going to focus on that in just a moment. But Jack has not been surprised about the Middle East and the conflicts there. Jack, it's really all in the Bible, isn't it, that's happening? Mm. Every single thing is in this Bible. This Bible, God wrote this 4,000 years ago and the New Testament was pinned 2,000 years ago. And everything in the New Testament is declaring the final war in history. Now, I want to tell you something. I came out of a Belgian home as a little boy. I had never heard the Bible. And I, I want to say something humorous. An epistle is one of the New Testament books. And that's what it's called. An apostle is one of the writers. I was so ignorant of the Bible, I had never heard it. I thought an epistle and an apostle or husband and wife <laughs> like Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, boy. And you know, Sodom and Gomorrah were the cities. It got destroyed because of all the sex sin of homosexuality and et cetera. Anyway, but I learned. Yes. I have memorized this book. I have read it, I said last week, 40 different times. And God came and said, you yes. have become so familiar with the word of God, you are being called to be the final prophet to warn about the return of Christ and Christmas. Tell everybody. I'll be telling about it. Mm -hmm. I know the time. Nobody will know the day and the hour, right? But that's not where Jesus stopped. He said, you will know, will know when it's near, even at the door. Amen. A few weeks from now, you will know. Well, I believe it's near, friends. Everything in the Bible pointing to the return of the Lord is... Um, uh, happening right now. Uh, let's take a look at what's happening over in the Middle East, if you will, please. China, Russia warn U.S. of consequences over sanctions. Now, you notice something I've said often, often. China and Russia are real buddies. And they are warning us, they're against us pretty much on many areas. China joins Russia for massive war games as he meets with Putin. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, there you go. And that's another one. Uh, Z, to attend Russia summit, North Korea's Kim invited. You know, they're trying to, I think, draw North Korea their way. Our president's trying to draw North Korea our way. But uh, I believe they're probably going to win there. And here we go again, Russia, China, tightens ties with Iran. And China... Russia pushed to ease North Korea sanctions as Seoul Mul's options. They're thinking about it. They're thinking about those sanctions. And then Iraq. Report that Iran moved missiles is without evidence. Well, no ruling out Israeli strikes on Iranian targets in Iraq. Now, who said this? The defense minister of Israel. He said, uh, you know, Israel can strike Iranian targets. If they threaten us, well, they were looking out for themselves. Iran calls for promotion of national solidarity against the enemy. Let's come together, they're saying. Iran president underlines unity among Islamic countries. And again, Iranian president, U.S. more hated than ever in Muslim world. <laughs> He's speaking up, isn't he? We better listen, too, just like they are in Israel. And Turkey urges Islamic world to unite against Israel in a call for a summit. Oh, my, you know, that really hurts me. I didn't think Turkey was going to go along with Russia and the others against Israel, but it looks like they're going. Turkey calls summit urges 
the <coughs> Islamic World to review ties to terror state. That's what they're calling him, Israel. And Merkel and Abbas expressed support for two-state solution. In other words, they are not for the idea of Israel just being a country there themselves. They want a Palestinian and Israeli uh, two-state solution. I just want to say, Jack, the Bible is so clear about all of this happening, even the countries involved. God knew who was going to do this. And so in the Word of God, he names those countries, doesn't he, Jack? Oh, what a book, ladies and gentlemen. It's been written for centuries. 4,000 years ago was the beginning of the writing of this book. And that's the Old Testament. That went on for the first 2,000 years. and the next 2,000 years, the apostles came in for the New Testament. But all 4,000 years is recorded here. And I'm going to tell you something. You can't believe most books. You can't believe most of the religious books. This you can believe. Why? 2 Timothy 4, 2. Preach the word. And 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, All scripture, all, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction. In righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. And so, thy word is truth. Preach the word. And don't listen to anyone who gives you this baloney and doesn't use the word to do it. We've had 11 guys now in Christian circles who've preached into the, the world. They were Looney Tunes. Every one of them was wrong. Why? Because I've got a book. That says the world will never end. And any guy who gets down there and talks about the end of the world knows nothing about this book and you ought to quit the ministry. He has deceived people, has scared people. The world's going to go on forever, praise the Lord. And the greatest time is when Jesus returns and sets up the kingdom of God in Jerusalem. Because God loves the Jews like I preached last week. Think of it. A never-ending world. He moves heaven and earth. They're raised from the dead because you can't die. I, I, Rexella, I got something God gave me not long ago. There is eternal life and eternal existence. Everyone born has a spirit, and that's the spirit that thinks, sees, hears. And that spirit can never cease to exist, eternal ex existence. But there's a difference for eternal life. The ones without Jesus exists forever, but they go from the Hades to Gehenna, the final penitentiary, and they exist forever mm. in the lake of fire. Those who have received Jesus have eternal life. And when you're standing there at that funeral, they're not dead. They're in the greatest place ever, absent from the body, present with the Lord instantaneously. And we sit there and cry, boy, they're better off than we are. And they have eternal life life yes. because of Jesus. Believe on the Son of God and thou shalt have Amen. eternal life. 400 times God says so. Better believe it. Thy word is truth. You know, Jack, I'm just so amazed though. I think the first message, you now Jack was in the ministry before I ever met him. I've said that many times. And he came to our church to preach. And I think the first message I ever heard him preach was the coming war with Russia. Is that right, Jack? Didn't you preach on the coming war with Russia? 60 years ago, Rex. I've been in it 72 years. And at that point, I had just been starting a lot of little churches. And then it started growing. And guess what? I preached that message in 800 one-week church crusades. Mm, nice. I was into evangelism. And in those days, the meetings were being held all over. You can't even find one anymore. Amen. Our pastors don't bother with it. We're no longer interested in soul winning. We're no in, longer interested in revival meetings. God forgive these dead 
pastors and dead churches. We need to get back and have the old-fashioned meetings where thousands got saved, the, the Billy Graham kind of crusades. That man of God preached to millions. They said he's won 65 million to Christ. Now he's gone. You know he started me? My mentor. He opened all the Youth for Christ rallies. And from there I got into these churches. 800 times I preached the coming war with Russia. A one night message as part of the 10 of the week. And then I went to citywide crusades, 234 of them, 40 million attended there. I preached that message there. I went to 50 nations of the world. I have preached that message more than anyone else. I'm going to do something the week after Christmas. I have that message, but someone started a fire in our building years ago. Everything I had was burned. Those old timers were gone. Oh, if I only had just recently a guy that supports us, a church that does in Florida, said something strange happened. He said, I've got a guy that's a plumber, and this elderly gentleman died. And everything's gone, but they found these 25 records of Jack Van Anthony. <laughs> and I'm sending him. Oh, dear. The message of 60 years ago, I have in my hands again. I'm going to have it ready for the Christmas and New Year's Eve programs. And you can get the original one. And then I'll also send one up to date as I'm preaching it now. Yeah. Wow. But I've preached it, and the, I haven't changed one word. You don't have to when you preach this book. Thy word is truth, like I said. Too many of you guys preach sermonettes and produce Christianettes. Oh, the feel-good messages, that'll get no one anywhere. Get them to heaven. Tell them what this book says. Name sin when it talks about sin. Because you can't get to heaven until your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. And the only way they can be gone, trusting Jesus. Gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone, buried in the deepest sea. Yes, that's good enough for me. I shall live eternally because my sins are gone through the precious blood of Jesus mentioned 800 times in the Bible. God said, I don't want you better believe it. He said, 800 times, you better believe it. Oh, that's for sure. We're going to get back in a moment to what is going on directly in the Middle East. I'm going to ask Jack some very pertinent questions. And I know he'll give us a biblical answer, but I'd like to draw your attention to our wonderful offer of the week, Final Prophecy. Whoa, happening now. Prepare. Take a look, please, at our commercial. Wildfires in California, volcanoes erupting in Hawaii, earthquakes, floods in Asia, famines in Sudan, Radical terrorism in the Middle East exported to America and Canada. Russia rebounding as a dangerous superpower and China gobbling up land and resources in nations around the world. These are all critical signs of the times and the people of God must be able to see and interpret them. Doctors Jack and Rex Olivenepi have created a brand new video teaching, Final Prophecy, happening now, prepare a shocking prophetic expose that is both chilling and eye-opening. This powerful new production is fast-paced, but clear and concise, and perfect for sharing with unsaved friends, as well with your pastor and church. It breaks out the astonishing predictions of these latter days in a hard-hitting yet understandable format. Friends, we all have questions about what's going to happen in the future. And so this is so important. I know your quest, many of them will be answered on your final prophecy happening now. Prepare, make the call or write to us right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. Now we're going to get back to the Middle East. Uh, you remember, I mentioned Russia, Iran, Iraq. Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia, too, I didn't mention them, but they're included in that, and China, and those that will join together against Israel. Now, Jack, there's going to be a huge battle over there, but are those names in the Bible? Now, I'm going to talk to you skeptics who say, ah, nobody can believe that, nobody can explain that Bible. 
it was written 4,000 years ago as far as the Old Testament is concerned, and the New was written 2,000 years ago, and it's all combined right here. And I'm going to tell you something. It predicted World War III, the final war, but left World War I and World War II alone. Wow! So everything I tell you now was written 4,000 years ago about the war that's coming. World War III. At 2 Timothy 3, one says, No, also on the last day, perilous, dangerous times shall come. Why? Because where Israel is, there's going to be a river of blood 200 miles long, the length of that nation and surrounding territory. That's number one. Number two, when it's all over, it'll take seven months to bury the dead. Nothing like it will ever happen. Now, who are the nations? Number one, the chief prince. The word chief there is from the Russian word Rosh, Russia, Russia. The chief Russian prince of Meshach and Tubal. Meshach is translated today Moscow, and Tobolsk is southwest of Siberia. When you get to verse 6, you have Persia. That's our modern Iraq and Iran. You have Tagarma, Turkey. And then you'll have 57 of the Muslim nations all united together to come against the Jew. It's going to be World War III, and every nation practically hates the Jew, as I said last week, and God loves the Jew. So no one's going to win except the Jew. God's on their side. And he loves them and I love them. The English-speaking nations of the world but take the side of protecting them and many other nations. But I'm going to tell you this right now. Anyone who comes against them will be the loser. There's going to be an atomic war. And guess who's going to win that? This has a prophecy. As the birds flying, so will the Lord protect Jerusalem. Birds flying? What does it mean? Balloons that have poison gas in them floating through the air. The new missiles. Atomic bombs, planes flying, everything from the space. As the birds flying, the Lord will defend Jerusalem. And seven times, it's going to be the bloodiest war in history. More people dying in that war than ever died. Why? Atomic weaponry. Seven times, are you listening? All you skeptics who poo-poo the Bible, I'm going to shock you. Psalm 97.3, Isaiah 66.15, Ezekiel 20.47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, Zephaniah 1.18, Malachi 4.1, the day shall come that shall burn as of it. Revelation 8, 7, a third part of the tree shall burn. All earth shall burn. 9.18, by these three was the third part of men killed. Fire, smoke, brimstone, Atomic bombs. 4,000 years ago. This is a book you can trust. Oh, my Jack. That's so impressive, isn't it, friends? To know that God knew. He knows everything. He knows what's going to happen. In fact, you know, in Luke 21, I, I couldn't help but think about Jesus. He said that the Jewish people would be scattered throughout the world and uh, that Gentile powers would be in control until the time of his return now, in 1967, the Jewish powers did not control Jerusalem again. And that's where Jesus is coming back. To me, that's very, very impressive. And uh, who's going to stand with Israel? You know, she has friends, and thank the Lord we are one of her friends. Take a look, please, our vice president. And we recognize how important Jerusalem really is. As I mentioned, um, they took Jerusalem in 1967. By recognizing Jerusalem, we chose fact, yes, 
over fiction. They took it. They owned it. Ergon and Putin denounced Trump's Jerusalem decision. And of course, that is Turkey. And uh, our president transferred our embassy to Jerusalem. Trump gave Jerusalem to Israel. No peace until we get it back, the Palestinian Authority said. Abbas calls on world to reconsider recognition of Israel after Trump's Jerusalem move. Oh, my. They just hate Israel, don't they? Then going on, Iran Defense Minister, Trump's Jerusalem move will hasten Israel's destruction. Oh, and Jordanian King warns U.S. against moving embassy to Jerusalem. Millie's rage boils over as U.S. moves our embassy. Chaos as U.S. embassy opens. Oh, that picture. Two more nations to move embassies. Good to Israel. And those are Latin American countries. Well, they say, hey, we recognize the importance of Jerusalem. And then Australia considers following U.S. on Jerusalem embassy. Thank the Lord that there are some countries along with the United States that realize the importance of the state of Israel and the capital being Jerusalem. Jack, they own it. They got it. They should keep it. Now I'm going to give you the greatest news you've ever heard. If you're a born-again Christian, you've received the Lord. You won't be here. You're going to be spared. What? When that war begins, just before it starts, the bloodiest history, the rapture takes place. What? And some of you guys are saying there'll be no rapture. Come on, either preach God's word, and if you won't, get out of the ministry. Don't deceive people. He says, I will keep you from, and that's the Greek word, ek, out of, the hour of testing that comes upon the whole world. And what hour is that? The war of Gog, of Magog. That very nation, as I mentioned, all right. They go home in the rapture and they're in with the Lord while the battle is going on. Millions are dying. They're there and they're being reviewed for rewards for a lifetime of service. Five different crowns. I won't get into them now. I will soon. Now, seven years has passed. Everyone's crowned. They're all already given positions that they're going to have in the Wonderful place. You know that prayer? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven will never move to earth forever. Uh -huh. And that prayer ends with, for thine, Father, is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. The world's never going to end. You guys have been preaching that baloney. Forever. Forever is forever. And oh, it's going to be wonderful. Yes. It says the fruit of the Spirit's going to fill the world. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Amen. And we're going to be here forever and forever. And Jesus is the King of the kings and the Lord of lords. Well, we won't need a pope. We'll have Jesus. And that's going to be somewhere Love, joy, peace, forever, forever. And listen, he took us out for the rapture to save us from the bloodshed of the atomic bomb. Seven years later, it's the closing battle, Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, and he brings us back for the closing scene, and the Lord Jesus Christ brings the armies of heaven and puts a stop to it. Yeah. And we've missed both. There's only one coming in the rapture is up the second coming is down for peace forever get ready you know jack i noticed that you looked up when you were praying the lord's prayer because our father is in heaven and he wants to be your father he wants to be your savior he sent his son for you oh how wonderful it is to know that you can become a member of god's family 
you can be cleansed of all your sins. That's why Jesus died on the cross, was for our sins. Will you pray this prayer of accepting Jesus as your Savior as Jack prays right now? That's why we came to your home. Pray the prayer. Jack. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Do it, Lord Jesus. I need peace, the peace of God, your peace, and I trust you. And Jesus, you died to take away all my sin and to give me eternal life with you. And I ask you now, come into my heart. Save me, precious Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, and welcome to the family of God. If you prayed that prayer, you've just been forgiven of every sin, cleansed. And I'll send you this wonderful little booklet for Steps in a New Direction. If you'll just write to me, if you have a spiritual problem, write. We'd love to correspond with you. God bless you as you walk with him. And now here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive the wonderful offer of the week. Chuck. Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order Final Prophecy happening now, prepare, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JBI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 704, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA 6Y1. Now, once again, here's Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I just want to say this is one of the most important offers we've ever had. Final prophecy, doesn't it ring a bell? You need to make the call right away. We'll get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You know, I want to leave you with, I think, a very good thought. If you cannot hear God speaking, perhaps you should turn up the volume control on your conscience. How very, very true that is. I look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, please remember that God cares for you. And so do we so very, very much. Please make a call to one of your neighbors, someone that you want to be watching Jack Benipe Ministry, somebody on your heart. We try to address everything going on in the world every time that we come on. And we want to continue doing this. So make a call for your loved ones to continue watching. And we will look always forward to being with you. And until then, remember, God cares for you. And so do we, so very, very much, as I always say. God bless you the days ahead. Keep looking up. Bye-bye.